guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on our YouTube account and we are looking probably the toughest faction within AFK Arena, um, which is of course our Greyborn faction. Now the Greyborn faction particularly has an am amazing amount of heroes and also an amazing lineup of heroes, which makes it so difficult. But nevertheless, we're gonna go through this. We're gonna break it down guys. Starting of course with Grez. So Grez is a hero that is used in a ton of AFK Arena. We see him in boss fights. We see him in Twisted Realm, we see him in Cursed Realm, we see him in the campaign with Alna. There is an incredible amount of places that he is utilized, which is the reason, guys, when it comes to the faction itself, he is probably one of the most sought after biggest priorities when it comes to building him out. Now, overall signature item, you only do need this plus 20, plus 30 when you do start kind of uh, maximizing the damage that you're doing within formations, because this will actually allow you to summon skeletal warriors much, much faster. Now, when it comes to the furniture, um, the nine of nine is really the big one for him. So when you do get those skeletal warriors, they will have the shadow shield effect on them. When the shadow shield is broken, that is what does damage guys, allowing Grez to maximize the damage, adding of course, additional to the shadow shield. And then of course the deadly protection as you go ahead and do the engraving. Now the engraving is not a priority. Again, when you start um, min maxing, for a lot of different aspects, you will want to build him up further. You can see I have him in the tier four gear, but building a basic guys, the 209 will work for Grez very well for a considerable amount of time um, until you really start pushing the Twisted Realm and the Cursed Realm or utilizing him within the campaign formations. Then of course the Greyborn Tower guys, he is used in pretty much all the formations. Brings us to Oden. Oden is probably the strongest um, Greyborn damage dealer. So when you look at signature item, when you look at furniture, when you look at his engraving, the higher you build him, the better he's gonna perform, guys. All of his abilities, including his signature item, just gets stronger and stronger. Attack rating is higher, haste is higher. Even looking at his furniture, guys, um, allows him to passively use Void Lightning, which again, is going to do more damage. The enemy with the current highest energy Absolutely, energy disintegration is awesome, but doing a lot more damage with this is amazing with the signature item. Then, of course, guys, a little bit more damage, but the plus 60 engraving on him. Tech rating is increased by 18%. Haste is increased by 20 Um, Haste, of course, being one of the biggest attributes within AFK Arena. The more you build him out, the better he is going to perform damage-wise. I recommend 30960 on him, guys, being completely maxed out. Bring us to Izold. Now, Izold used to be a hero that was a very solid carry. Um, as of now, he does work in some campaign or some um, of the tower formations. If you don't have him really built out, again, it, it's not going to be a huge priority miss. He's used in, I believe, one of the Twisted Realm, maybe one or two of the Cursed Realm fights. But ultimately, again, you get into the min-maxing min with him um, when you want to build him out. That is why I built him out. Overall, guys, he does have the ability to self-sustain if you can get him um, to scale. So it does take a little bit of time for him to get his heal up. Once his heal is up, if you're building him up, it will work well. Again, looking at earlier game, even looking at campaign, he's not used for anything um, short of the Greyborn Tower and possibly, again, a rare niche formation. Um, here and there, you're not going to see much of a use for Izold. Now, Thorin is the king of cheese, of course, the only place he is really used. Um, we see him in the towers, and then we also do see him in an incredible amount of campaign stages, because as the enemy gets stronger, his retaliation ability will, of course, do more damage, which makes maximizing him out really, really big. Um, plus 30 signature item, absolutely on him. Early game, you have to unlock it. Plus 30 is where you ultimately want to take it. Um, furniture, again, on him, not a big priority. 3 of 9 is good just for the little bit of a draw in. And even the energy points here, again, can be a little bit in. Now, one thing with him, guys, do not engrave him. I repeat, do not engrave him, guys. You want him to take more damage. If we get an engraving reset, he is probably going to be the one that I'm going to reset because you do not want, nor do you need the engraving on him. Looking at Silas, now Silas is one of the best Greyborn support heroes. Him and Desira actually changed. We waited about two years till we finally got a support guys and when they came out with silas they did not disappoint at all a couple big things guys the plus 30 signature item on here allied that here have more than 50 percent max health increased attack rating by 20 percent 
That is huge. That is absolutely huge at the 20%. Also with those furniture guys makes a very big difference because the effects of the skill can be utilized by ranged ally whenever injected fury is used. That is right guys, normal attack, frequency of normal attack goes up, which is awesome with his furniture. Um, a lot of players go for the plus 30 with the engraving in here. It does a little bit more um, healing. Um, if you're really looking to build them out guys, the plus 60 on him is good for the mitigation. Unfortunately, with the Healing Haze or with these clouds, they do not stack, which is the reason, again, an E30 would be good because all of his heals are based on the attack. So the stronger and higher that his attack is, um, the better the heals are going to perform by him. But ultimately, guys, the engraving is not really a big requirement on that one. Pharrell is another hero that offers an incredible amount of crowd control. And similar to Oden, the more that you build him out, the better he is going to perform. Not only does he do a lot of crowd control, but he also does a lot of energy reduction, which is the reason why so many players do build him. Um, looking at the plus 30 signature item, guys, absolutely. His furniture makes a really, really big difference. Um, a cursed arrow as his normal attacks, which is very good. Getting up his spirits with that. And then, of course, this plus 30 um, is a little bit further down the priority for the faction. But a lot of players do like it because of the additional crowd control. So your stun actually lasts a second longer. Um, overall, again, he's not a hero that is used within Twisted Realm. We don't see him in Cursed Realm. Only place we really see him in is, is in the Ulna Grez or in the Greyborn Tower, where a majority of these heroes are really utilized. But early game, he can dominate with the crowd control, guys. He can actually lock down entire teams, allowing you to progress within the campaign. Once you start getting to late game, end game, um, he is still used in a couple formations, again, for that crowd control aspect. But when it comes to Curse Realm, Twisted Realm, things of that nature, not really utilized in any of those formations. Um, Baden is very unique. Now, Baden is a hero that really doesn't have a use. I believe one Curse Realm team utilized him for a little bit. I don't even know if they use him again. You're really getting into the deep woods with the min-maxing. Um, trying to maximize the damage that you're doing within different game modes. Um, ultimately, he's a hero probably I wouldn't focus on building really high. Again, I built him up pretty high just for the simple fact that one, we had him already at five stars, and he was used, I believe, for one Twisted Realm comp, but I don't think he's used for that comp anymore. And again, can be replaced by a couple other heroes, not a big priority to build out Baden. Now, Damon is the ultimate carry. Now, when you talk about carry heroes in AFK Arena, which is a hero that can pretty much do it by himself, um, Damon is that hero, guys. Shamira used to be the hero with the heal ability that she possessed. Damon does it um, very, very well and in a similar manner to what Shamira did. Um, plus 20 signature item on him will do really well. Same with the furniture. If you get the 3 of 9 or the 9 of 9, they will both do incredibly well if you're utilizing Damon for a carry. Big thing with Damon, guys, is still used in the Greyborn Tower, still used in formations. I was actually using him in Chapter 42. Also still utilized in a couple of our Cursed Realm comps. So he does have viability. Um, and again, earlier game, absolutely build him out, guys. You do want to build him out. Plus 30 signature item. I would probably put the furniture on him. Um, didn't do the engraving. If you build the plus 20 signature item, it'll work. Duration of the Blood Shield, of course, goes up by two seconds with the plus 30. Ultimately, guys, one of the heroes that you absolutely want to build within the faction is Damon. Looking at Isabella, Isabella used to be a hero that was really strong with her rework. They put in some crowd control. Um, it was used actually in a Twisted Realm formation. Now she has been benched again. So she actually has doesn't have any or doesn't have zero utility as of right now. Um, definitely would be a pass building her out. Again, if you have a lot of the heroes in the faction built, you can definitely build her. Short of the Greyborn Tower, you're not going to see any use for her. Um, now, Tresnar, on the other hand, Tresnar is a PvP monster. I've actually seen him in a couple formations, including some of the Twisted Realm formations. Also utilized within the Temple Rift um, for some of the formations with being maxed out, guys, plus 30 signature item. We see him with the 9 of 9 furniture. Of course, that makes a big difference, Life Leech and his energy. And this is really the big one, guys, his plus 60. Shield mitigates all frontal damage. So if he has targets in front of him, he is mitigating all frontal damage. 
which is kind of crazy when he uses the Soul Barricade. He is also one that a lot of players have built out because he will destroy Ainz. Um, he actually has an ability that nullifies the healing, which is the reason why um, it does really, really well with the Ainz comp. Enemies that are struck are unable to be healed. He will charge right over behind Ainz. Um, he will hit Ainz, not allowing him to be healed and actually just burning him down pretty quick, which makes him pretty unique with PvP. But again, he's a hero that you do have to build out considerably to do well. And when he does and he is built out, it seems like he does well. I haven't really tested him that much. But ultimately, guys, because of the investment in the heroes, he is a little bit lower down on the priority than some of the other heroes that we've seen within the faction. Looking at Kalthar, Kalthar is there for the Thorn Cheese. That is really it. Um, I built him out a little bit, bit more because he does go to the Spectral Resurgence meaning when he dies, he comes back as a specter. That can really help win your thorn stages when he goes um, damage into that spectral form. Can make a difference, but ultimately, guys, he is not a priority to build out. He will still do a decent amount of damage without being built out to where he is. Now, Shamira, unfortunately, she used to be a carry till Damon came out. Um, as of now, guys, she's been kind of replaced. If you don't have more real, she is utilized in some formations within the Temporal Rift, um, or excuse me, within um, the Twisted Realm, within the Dark Nemora. But again, a lot of a lot of um, players have replaced her. We've seen, especially when you're optimizing and building out Scarlet, Shamira has been kind of back back burnered. Um, she's not really utilized that much. Naura, early game, absolutely a monster. Later game, just utilized in the tower. Plus 20 is really all that you need. You don't even really need the plus 20. Um, I built up a little bit more, just the three of nine furniture to go ahead. If she gets a kill, guys, she is going to provide some crowd control, which works. But again, outside of the tower, not really utilized, which brings us to Desira. Now, Desira is the second support hero that we actually got for the faction. Um, Greyborns absolutely needed her when you start getting into multiple teams. She has a very, very interesting toolkit that a lot of players have asked about. Allies gain dodge, gain extra receiving, and has a damage mitigation. Now, plus 30 signature item, absolutely. But when you look at here, enemies within the Oceanic Mist are unable to receive a majority of buffs from allies, but shall retain the buffs they have. So this will actually mitigate the buffs. But enemy targets are cursed with one Mark of Hatred every three seconds in the mist. Now, Mark of Hatred, pretty unique ability. Um, this reduces the attack rating and the accuracy points. So now you have dodge, now you have mitigation, now you have attack reduction and an accuracy reduction, which is the reason why a lot of players absolutely love Desira um, for the multiple abilities she has in her toolkit. Um, if you're building her out a little bit further, even here, guys, for the gradual regeneration and looking here, the amount of health recovered is equal to 22% of the attack rating. When you're building her out, it's really hard to get through um, with burst teams. She can shut down burst teams very, very fast um, because of the skills that she has. Most healers, it, it's kind of a general healing ability. But when you start looking at the mitigation, when you look at the attack rating reduction, um, it, it's hard to pass up Desira. She is actually a really strong support hero to build. Works incredibly well. I've even tried her early game and she did work incredibly well. Hodgkin. Now, he has been one of the most predominant buffing tanks that we've probably seen in an incredible amount of time. Plus 20 signature item on him. Um, furniture is where a lot of people say this is one of the big ones, guys. Um, is the effect to see damage redu reduced by 35%. Um, if the same enemy is siphoned again, they deal damage equal to, so they will be dealt damage, so Hodgkin actually does damage. But a lot of players said, guys, nine of nine is really where you want to use it for this. Um, the healing efficiency and the damage re reduced. Healing efficiency, of course, big when you want to take out targets. Um, some of his abilities, guys, the Jolly Roger, Allied within range, get a 30% attack rating and defense buff, which is huge, guys. Um, the plus 30, I, I'm on the floor, I, kind of on the on the on the wall with with if this is really worth it. A lot of players do build him out to a plus 60. 
I think there are a lot of other heroes that have a much higher priority than Hodgkin. I focus on the damage dealers, but getting him a really 209, I, I would say plus 20 signature item, 9 of 9 furniture, will do incredibly well. That is what I run him at. They win. Now, she's a hero pretty unique, um, used within the Abyssal Expedition, um, AE, and also the Hunting Grounds. Does a lot of damage because she does go immune. Um, she's another, he another hero that the more you build her out, the more you're going to get out of her. But again, within the faction itself, not a very high priority. Kind of one of those niche heroes, again, that you're going to find kind of the one-off battle where she works really well. Other than that, guys, not a really big priority to build. Torn, the exact same, not a huge priority. He is used in one cursed realm, one or two cursed realm comps. Um, ultimately, outside of there, he's not used anywhere. When you get into, again, the min maxing within the cursed realm, that is the only place you're going to find him. And that is only in addition if you do have more real built. If you don't have more real built um, from the Celestials, there's not going to be any reason to utilize Torn. Then we have Kayleen. So Kayleen, very unique, guys. Um, a lot of players have played her up front as a tank. So she actually has this Necro Hound that does a little bit of crowd control. And she also does have these Ethereal Spirits, which again can do some crowd control. Um, I've seen her front line. I've seen her back line, depending on the team comps that she uses. A lot of players are absolutely crushing it in the Greyborn Tower with her. Um, working incredibly well, which is the reason we have started to build her out. Got her all ready for the tower, guys. We just got to start testing her in there. But overall, I would say she's probably mid to high tier within the Graveborn. Not a priority early because just like a lot of other heroes, guys, she is going to need to be built out to have some of these abilities that work incredibly well. So early game, I don't know how she performs, but overall, Damon is still the carry. Which brings us to Fane, guys, the last one of the Graveborn. He's another hero, guys. The plus 20 um, works well. Even the plus 30 if you're looking to build him out as a support hero. Overall, we've seen he works well with Nara. He works well with Treznar, really locking down enemies. But in campaign, I haven't seen him. Twisted Realm, Cursed Realm, I haven't seen him. Um, I haven't really seen more viability. Again, outside of the Greyborn Tower, these heroes are seeing no use, which is the reason why I kind of passed on him. To go ahead and build them out continue with the signature item things of that nature there was not mo more benefit to really build it out um just for the fact i have you know a significant amount of my graveborn heroes already built to build a hero out that has a again a, a kind of a niche utility um i went ahead and passed on so looking with our within our wish list guys we always take a look at this um we have two more heroes to actually build out of here but who would i build first now, of course, guys, number one would be Damon. So Damon, again, is probably the best carry within the AFK arena. Absolutely love how he performs. Early game will do incredibly well. Even going into end game will do incredibly well. Followed by Oden. Oden, of course, guys, massive damage dealer. Has crowd control in there, which does work incredibly well. Sees a lot of different game modes, um, an incredible amount of damage, which is the same with Grez. Grez is a hero, guys. You're going to actually take Grez all the way to five stars. You want to build him up. The utility with him is that strong that you do want to build him up and honestly build him up very fast. Now, next hero, um, I would go with Pharrell just because if you're earlier game, even if you're looking into the campaign later game, um, he is still utilized for campaign energy disintegration, um, crowd control, things of that nature. He does work incredibly well. Then support, it's kind of a toss up, but I would probably go with Silas. Silas, of course, we utilize in a lot of formations. Again, we see that attack rating boost used in Twisted Realm, Cursed Realm, um, really the utility. Once you get one of these up to probably that ascended level, you could possibly drop in a Hodgkin, drop in a Desira in there, or even putting in Thorin for that cheese effect out of here um, to really continue to build up those heroes within the Graveborn faction itself. Sorry guys, so that'll do it for today's video, guys. The Graveborn, incredibly hard to get through. I would say between the Graveborn and Wilder, um, Mauler and Lightbear, the Graveborns are probably the, the biggest priority. I believe they carry about the best heroes, followed very, very closely by the Wilders um, for the faction accounts, just because the lineup of heroes that they have are used in multiple game modes 
which makes a really big difference when you look at the overall utility within the faction itself. They do work incredibly. All right, guys, so that'll do it for our Graveborn recap. We still have the Celestial, the Hypogens, and the Dimensionals to go through in the next couple of videos. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.